Hey everybody, so this is take two on this video. Um, the first one, I kind of, uh, I rambled a little bit on the end in regards to uh, the new Batgirl Joker cover. So I'm not sure, let's see how this one goes. And maybe um, I'll upload this one because I do have an opinion on this and I'd like to share it, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to say anybody was wrong. That's not what this is. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. We're here on YouTube to share. I'm not trying to start a fight with anybody. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Um, I'm already not liking the way this is going. So let's just get to the books and just slow down with the rest of this and, uh, see how it goes but yesterday one of the kiddos wanted to trade in his Skylanders so we ran to the shop and um, he got some store credit and he bought some magic cards and while I was there I picked up some bags and boards and I cleared out my pool box a lot of this uh, is either from last week or the week before I'm, I'm always I'm routinely behind on my pool or at least the last couple of months my schedule I used to have Wednesdays off I don't have Wednesdays off anymore so it's really not that big a deal because I have enough stuff around to read that I'm usually not too fussed about missing my new books. If it's something that I'm interested in, there are people on YouTube who do reviews of the same books, some of the books that I read, that I valid their opinions on. So if they say they're awesome, that just makes me more excited to read it. And if they say it sucked, then it usually gets delegated a little bit further down on my to-read pile, which at the moment is a short box. <laughs> So, so let's get to let's get to the books. Now, like I said, this is what I picked up yesterday. I haven't read all of these, and I'll get to why I haven't read the ones I haven't read when I get to them. But I did read most of them this morning while I enjoyed my cup of coffee and the the lack of people at the house at the moment. We usually have a lot of people over, and it's awesome. I love having friends. It's great, but sometimes I'm just like I just want to chill. I just want to sit on the couch with the dog, maybe play a little Xbox, read some comic books, and just chillax. You know what I'm saying? I don't always need a lot of people around me. So while I have this opportunity, I read some books. But I, I haven't read my issue number 28 of Revival. Um, I was talking to La Rasa. I have the singles in this. I'm missing a couple. But I'm a little behind, so I'm going to wait until I catch up with my books before, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to I don't want to leave any gaps in my revival. So I'm waiting to get a couple issues that I'm missing, I think, and then I'm just going to binge read this. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I haven't even flipped through it. I'm excited. I also picked up uh, The Sixth Gun. This is Dust to Dust. This is issue one of this miniseries. I guess they're just doing miniseries. I don't know. Um... Part of the reason why Six Gun is great, but I absolutely positively loved uh, the Brian Hurt art, and he didn't do the art in this book, so I'm going to hold off on this too. Let's see, what's next? Saga number 26. Now, part of my problem with modern comics is the way. The false cliffhangers. I think it was a sleepy reader who who threw that term up. And this is a perfect example of that. In the last issue, they went to go get drag dragon semen to cure the will of his injury. They come across some dragons. That was the cliffhanger. The first four pages of this, that's resolved. I think it might have even been a little bit longer than four pages. So knowing how Brian K. Vaughn writes... Issue 27 is going to be half an issue of resolving what the last false cliffhanger was. And that really only leaves like six pages of linear story before you have to digress into what happened before. It just seems like this book would read better as a graphic novel. I don't know. I'm... Or even like the omnibus on that would probably be a little frustrating. 
I don't know. I like Brian K. Vaughn. I don't want to give up on Saga. I'm not going to give up on Saga. I'm not trying to come across like I'm going to give up on Saga. I love Saga. But the regurgitative writing style is starting to wear on me a little bit. Next is Black Science number 12. This is another book that's kind of starting to get to me a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how, how long this title is going to run issue count-wise, but, I mean, this thing could go on forever. They could just keep reintroducing new copies of the people that have already passed away. So, they just need to hurry up and get to it. I do enjoy it, but it's, there's no, what's the word? There's no suspense, because regardless of how dire the situation is, even if the people in the situation don't make it, you know they're going to show up again, because it's already happened. So there's no, uh, there's no suspense. There's no lasting effect for any of the ramifications. So I, don't, it, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Or maybe I'm just being too picky about my comics. That might be the case. Next up, we have the names. I was two issue be two issues behind. Um, I called the shop last night and I said, or last week, m month, excuse me, last month. My coffee this morning is super strong. It's great. Okay, last month I called the shop. I said, hey, I'm missing issue. What is this six? You still have one on your shelf. Would you please put it in my box? And they're like, Tim, of course. Now, this covers horrid. This is the worst depiction of. Katya, Katya, K-A-T-Y-A, I don't know, this lady right here, this is the worst depiction of her in this book thus far, but this was probably my, uh, and this is my least favorite cover out of the series, but this was probably my favorite issue out of the names yet, I'm a huge Peter Milligan fan, but the, the ending with the surgeon, who is the antagonist in this series, um, it kind of came out of left field, and it surprised me. And that's always good, because, you know, to be surprised by a book is a rare thing. Next up, we have issue seven of the names. I got this the other day, yesterday. I'm still kind of processing this. Excuse me. I mean, it all kind of makes sense. Peter Milligan is one of these people who has the definitive ending to his stories, usually, and writes to that point. So you could kind of see it coming. But it was interesting nonetheless. Next up, we have East of West number 18. I liked issue 18 a lot more than I liked issue 17. Um, the last couple of pages in this book, or in this, they they go into the, the, the background. They show when Babylon got plugged in the machine, um, and they talk a little bit about that. And the last couple of pages of this book were pretty heartwarming, where Death gives... Uh, oh, geez, I can never remember her name. His lady... Lady... Jeez, oh, I gotta look. I have the worst memory when it comes to names in particular. Uh, da, 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 da. Mao. Duh. Mao. Okay. He gives Lady Mao a pendant, and he's like, Hey, if you ever need me, talk into this, and I can hear you, and I will come a running. And the only thing that will keep me from you is me. That being death. And I just thought that was like... Very, uh... Yeah. Oh, there's a page I missed. Yes, my... Yeah, cool. Yeah. East of West 18. Good stuff. Love this book. One of my favorites. Issue 17 was just a little bit of a letdown. But this one was great. Highly recommend it. And last but not least, for the books that I picked up... Yesterday, I think this one's new. So this was last week, not like two weeks ago. This is uh, Swamp Thing number 40. This is it for this. I'm going to be sad to see it go. I am sad to see it go. I really enjoyed this, um, with the exception of how they handled uh, Alex's remains, which in a previous issue had been reanimated into uh, something to hunt down the rest of the avatars of the green. But the, the closure on that was just a little disappointing. And it was kind of cool seeing like the, the, the samurai, Avatar of the Green, and like the, this guy's like a Highlander, he wears a kilt, you know, that kind of thing, it was kind of cool. And there's like a Jurassic 
Cretaceous period, Avatar of the Green, this big guy in the back. Um, Swamp Thing kind of put his foot down and went, look, bitches, you're going to listen to me? And they did. They also introduced, but they, they did get some closure on, like, all of the random, uh, the avatars of the metal and the fungus, and they, they pretty much wiped the slate clean of everybody but Arcane in the red. So that was cool. It tied up a bunch of stuff that Alan Moore had started and Charles Soule and, uh, Scott Snyder kind of touched on in their, their books, in that part of that. They're part of the run in that, that series, so that was kind of cool. I liked it. I'm gonna miss it. I'm sure somebody else will, you know, after Convergence, it'll come back in spring. I th thought that was funny. I was like, it'll be back. So I'm thinking I'll be back in the spring. Because he's a plant. Plants come back in the spring. Anyway, I'm a dork. But now let's talk about this. This, uh, And if you guys don't want to hear my opinion on this, thanks for watching up to this point. I'll see you guys later. If you are interested, okay, here we go. Now, you guys all know what I'm talking about. The Batgirl cover, Joker with the gun and the smiley face. She's crying. I showed it to my lady, and her reaction was she completely understood Babs's reaction, Barbara Gordon. Now... I asked her why, and she goes, well, Joker's crazy, and that kind of, you're right, if there was somebody that you knew who, psychopathic serial killer, and you ended up in a room with this guy, in her position, you'd be scared too. Now, <clears throat> I'm not trying to say anybody's opinion is wrong, that's not what this is, it, it's, my point isn't Everybody who's already talked about this is wrong. That's not what this is. Art is subjective. My only problem with all of this is the controversy is just going to make it bigger. And we can't have people tell us what we can and cannot enjoy. Censorship is a long, slippery road. And if this gets nipped in the bud, then it's only going to be a foothold for what comes next. There have been covers lately that have been all this horrible, and it's come out to, like, a flop. Um, that Teen Titans cover. It boggles my mind. That thing was just, just horrible, disgusting. But, you know... I ended up with a copy of it. Uh, it was sent in a random act of kindness from a fellow YouTuber. It wasn't something I sought out. And I'm not going to be buying the Batgirl cover. Just because I'm not into Batgirl. Now, if Cammy talks me into picking up Batgirl, I'll pick up Batgirl. Because I respect and trust her opinion. She hasn't led me astray yet. But it's just not a character that I'm interested in exploring at the moment. I have a lot of books that I have to read, and I'm not sure I'm, at right now, really interested in picking up a new title. Okay, there's that. Now, this is just subjective. This more or less could be delegated as a, a comment towards another video I watched earlier. Um, Stacy Poole put up one where she was discussing the whole thing. She made a comment about the way Alan Moore writes women. I saw your point. I understand what you're saying. If I may, I would like to suggest Promethea. Written by Alan Moore. The lead is a strong-willed, opinionated woman. I think it's a very flattering depiction of a female in a comic book. Wonderfully illustrated by the J.H. Williams III. Hands down, one of my favorite artists. Check it out. Great stuff. Strong-willed, opinion, female character. Anyway, I think uh, I think this video might make the cut. The last one was a little rambly, but I think I got my point across here without stirring the pot too much because I'm I'm not interested in stirring the pot. I'm. It's just 
I like comic books. I don't like censorship. Um, that's about all I'm going to say on this. Howler Mouse summed it up a lot better than I did. You guys should go check out his video. Art is subjective. Remember that. Art is subjective. Everybody has their own opinion on what we read. That's one of the coolest things about this whole deal. I can read this book and take something from this. And somebody else could read this book and take something completely different. So uh, that's about all I got. That's about all I'm going to say. So thanks for watching. You guys have a nice day.